Well, hello everybody, and welcome back to G-Bears Off-Grid Way, the homestead in the desert. September 13th, 2020. It's a Sunday, and we're over here by the mass shower, what I call it. Um, the outdoor shower, if, if you will. Well, a few days back, or maybe even a week back, I had a question in comments, and I apologize that I've been in such a rotten mood lately that I didn't get to it and answer the question. So the question was, uh, somebody is uh, putting their outdoor shower together and they wanted to know some things about the uh, shower and how it works. Okay, so one of the things was what to do with the floor. So what I did, and the birds have been making a mess in here, what I used is that's that plastic deck wooding. It's made from old um, ground up uh, plastic shopping bags and stuff, but uh, it's 100% waterproof. So you don't have to coat it with anything or anything like that, but you do have to use special screws so they don't rust. And I did that. So I got, um, I think I got two pieces of it and I made it three foot by three foot. Uh, it took three pieces with a little quarter inch gap in between them so the water can run through. And uh, then two pieces under, or underneath, or three pieces underneath, one, two, three. So let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, and three is nine times three, 27. So I would have gotten two, two uh, pieces of it and uh, had a little scrap left over. Okay, so I just made a three by three and that's the size of my shower. And then for the shower, of course, just two by four posts in the corner. And uh, this is just that uh, fake white wood with the uh, redwood coating on it, uh, fence boards, the cheap stuff. And uh, those were some extra boards I had left over from doing a fence job. So I added those in there. And then uh, this, this was some leftover um, shiplap that I had from when I did the uh, roof and the eaves on the um, cabin. So basically, I put a, a, a seat in here. It's a uh, three foot by three foot. Then I made the uh, the base to go in there so I could stand on that and the water will go through it and I'm not standing in mud. And then outside of it, I just put a a piece of leftover wood siding out here so I could step out and put my flip-flops on so I don't walk through dirt. But I had put uh, these little um, stepping stones here so I can get over to the deck and go in the uh, back door of the cabin without having to walk in any dirt at all. But uh, these birds are really doing a job out here so I'm going to end up um, enclosing this and screening it in so that I don't have to worry about that happening again next year after I clean this all out. And uh, because I'll have it all closed in, I'll be able to sit out there on the nice uh, summer nights when there's a light breeze blowing because uh, the breeze comes in this angle. So it'd be nice and cool in there with this, you know, maybe a three foot high wall around the edge and some screen and then maybe a screen door right there to go in and out or maybe even a screen door right here now put the screen door over there give me a little more room to sit over here with a couple of chairs and maybe a, a small table to put uh, uh, the drinks on hot chocolate in the winter and cold beer in the summer all right so back to the shower here that's what I did and then I built a shelf up high and I put two 20 gallon barrels up there and uh, I built a PVC manifold to go in between the two barrels and then that ties into the um, the rod that goes over that way. Now this this line that comes up here with the shutoff on it that's originally that was originally the um, the feed going into the cabin before I got my water tank up there. So I would just have 40 gallons of water feeding the cabin and the outdoor shower. And that's before I even had 
a bedroom or a bathroom on the cabin. It was just that little uh, 10 by 12, one room, kitchen, dining, bedroom, everything all together in one. That's how I got started out here. And then uh, every year when the weather breaks, I do a little bit more to make things better. So back here. So that valve shuts off the water going into the cabin and just lets it feed the shower out of gravity feed from the barrels. But when I top off that water tank, that water tank is actually higher than these barrels um, elevation. So I can just open that valve and it fills these two barrels right up to the top. This little unit right here, this half inch PVC, it has a um, female hose connection on this end as you can see. And then I have a, a valve there to, sh to turn it on and off. So when I want to pump water up there, and I, I go down and pick up a few barrels of that from a friend's house in the OC or whatever, I can just bring my little transfer pump over, hook it into one of the, uh, the barrels, screw it up there, turn it on and open that valve, and it'll fill those barrels up. Now originally, those two tubes going up there were clear plastic tubes. And uh, that was to tell me how much water was in the tanks. Well, that wasn't a very good idea uh, because the clear plastic allowed algae to grow through it. So when I painted the container, I just went ahead and sprayed those with uh, latex and, and blocked the sun out of them. And uh, it's been working a lot better ever since. All right, so, one of the things that makes it a mass shower is the type of valve I have. It's a pull string valve. You can find those at plumbing companies, uh, plumbing supply companies. Um, I think it'll be a special order at Home Depot. I'm not sure. Um, I got this one from a company called Baird and Crockett in Orange, California. So anyway, you pull on the handle and you get water coming out the shower head. Now this one still sticks a little bit and uh, I need to take it apart and uh, put some plumber's lube on it, but uh, it still works. And uh, that water was nice and cool. So I painted one barrel black and it does have a heating element in there. Originally I was going to use the excess electricity from my PMA turbine um, to heat water in that. Well, again, I was going to say it, I don't need any more hot water. <laughs> Just that barrel alone being black, paint, spray painted black with plastic um, spray, spray paint, that heats up that water so hot that I usually have to go and shut the valve off and just use the cold water side, which is also um, in its hot state. It's probably 95, 100 degrees in that blue tank. Uh, the stuff in there is 120, 130 degrees. It's just too hot in the summertime. And guess what? In the wintertime, when it's below 30 degrees out here, I don't come out here and shower. I shower inside. That originally, I would have to take my showers early before the uh, sunset um, all year round in this thing because that's all I had. So then on this side, I put together a little sink and uh, this one line that comes off of that line above the valve. So it's, it's gravity fed from the two tanks up high and that gives me water down here at the sink. And again, the birds have been tearing this thing up. So I haven't had a chance to uh, clean it all up. I haven't been using it because if it's hot during the day, instead of taking a quick shower out here, I just go sit in the tote koozie. So, but uh, that outdoor shower is nice and I'll probably get back to using it next year. And I'm gonna put some uh, protectors around here and keep the birds out. See, they, as soon as I move, they all come around. So they, they poop all over everything. Lots of uh, nitrogen for the garden, but uh, what a mess cleaning it all up. Uh, I hear them at night, they get up on top of my little light cover in there. They get on top of my camera here. Uh, you know, just little irritants, but uh, what the heck? You know, they're just birds. They don't know any better.
But uh, I'll have to teach them. All right. So that's all I had for this. And uh, one other thing that I did today was No, I, I didn't get my controller yet. I did call it today, but uh, didn't get anything out of that. So anyway, I put in a Renogy Rover that uh, I bought off of Andy. And um, that used to be in his motorhome, but he, uh, he wanted one with Bluetooth so he could always check what's going on on it on his cell phone. And uh, as I read the instructions on this one, this one can also have Bluetooth, but you have to buy a separate module for it. Uh, um, right now, I just have this tied up to two of the new panels uh, going into that um, because this one is actually going to handle all of the old panels. Once I uh, do that, I'll be taking all these other um, different controllers out of here and putting just the rover up there to charge from that side of the battery bank. Now, uh, down here I also tied these last, or the, the new four used ones, I tied those back into my old existing battery bank because I've been getting this battery bank up to 14 volts during the day. And uh, right now it's down to 12.5, but 12.5 uh, is still good because I got things running inside the cabin. So, the uh, smaller controllers down here, those are going to come out later on. The second set of panels out there, um, two of them come into the Rover and two of them go into the Wanderer. And uh, both of those are uh, Renogies, but uh, one's a PWM and one's an MPPT. So I will be changing all of that around and fixing this uh, explosion in a, a spaghetti factory wiring and getting everything nice and neat in here so that uh, when I come in to do something I'll know what I'm doing I don't have to trace wires uh, I just look at them and I can see where they go okay everybody that's all I have for today thank you for joining me I really am glad that you all come by and stop by and leave comments and uh, anybody else that I have forgotten I'll go back through the comment sections and I'll um, see what I've been missing in the last couple of weeks and not answering and I'll try to get your questions answered for you any other questions on the shower don't forget to leave them down in the comment section below and I'll get back to you this is G Bear signing off